I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about the gamma distribution, or gamma random variables. The gamma distribution has two parameters. It has a shape parameter alpha and a rate parameter lambda. Both of these parameters must be greater than zero. The, a random variable has a gamma distribution if it has this probability density function. Uh, as a reminder, look at that indicator function first to determine the support. So it has support over all positive real numbers. And otherwise, this uh, function is a little bit complicated. The key is to recognize what might be called the kernel of the function, this random variable raised to the alpha minus one power and e to the negative lambda x. Uh, the gamma function that's out there in the front is the gamma function, uh, and it's defined by this particular integral. We will denote a gamma random variable using this notation, so x tilde g a for gamma alpha lambda. Let's take a look at some PDFs. So here's some example PDFs, and now depending on the parameter values, they have some quite different uh, looks. In particular, if the shape parameter is one or less, you get a PDF that starts at its maximum at zero and just decays. So very similar to the exponential distribution if you took a look at that video. The, that shape parameter will sort of determine how quickly it decays. So the smaller it is, the faster the decay. Uh, in contrast, if the shape parameter is greater than one, then what you'll actually end up having is a peak distribution. So the peak distribution here along that bottom row, right? you can see that there's a single mode for the distribution that depends on the value for the rate parameter and for that matter, the shape parameter. All right, so we can calculate from the PDF the mean or expectation of that gamma random variable. It turns out to be the uh, shape parameter divided by the rate parameter. The variance turns out to be the shape parameter divided by the rate parameter squared. Uh, we can calculate that cumulative distribution function. Uh, it has sort of an even messier form perhaps. It has this ratio of these two different gamma functions. The first one in the numerator there is called the incomplete gamma function, and it's defined by this particular integral right here. And of course, you saw the denominator gamma function earlier. We can take a look at some uh, cumulative distribution functions. Uh, I guess not too much to say here. The first six on the top there kind of look like CDFs uh, of exponential distributions, if you watch that video. Uh, the bottom three have this sigmoidal curve uh, look, uh, where that sigmoidal curve, where it occurs, depends on the values of those parameters. Okay, uh, so let's, we talked briefly about this relationship with exponential distributions as we were introducing PDFs and, and other uh, content for this gamma random variable, but let's now be explicit. So if you have a set of independent exponential random variables with the same parameter, and it's a rate parameter in the notation that I'm using here, that same rate parameter lambda, then if you take a sum of those exponential random variables, you have a gamma random variable. And it turns out that the rate parameter is the same parameter as those exponentials had, and the shape parameter is n. Similarly, if you had a gamma random variable where that shape parameter was one, that's equivalent to an exponential random variable. Um, I want to highlight again that some folks use a different parameterization of the gamma distribution. So instead of using the rate, they will use its inverse, which is called the scale. And if you have that scale parameter instead of the rate parameter, you can update the PDF and the mean and variance uh, just by plugging in the uh, alternate parameterization for the parameter. So you have the PDF up here, right? And you have the expectation is just now alpha theta, if theta is that scale parameter, and the variance is alpha times theta squared. All right, so we introduced the gamma random variable. It has two parameters. Uh, in this case, we use the shape and rate, both of which need to be positive. The gamma random variable has support over the positive real numbers. The expectation is just the shape over the rate, and the variance is the shape over the rate squared. In the next video, we're going to talk about the inverse gamma distribution. Hope to catch you there.